Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at Cyrobe's OP Int build, which is stronger than every other build, not clickbait. Yeah, I think it's clickbait, so let's get into it. So, Bastard Sars spawns 20 bullets in a 360 degree area around you. Wing of Astel spawns 10 bullets in a 180 cone in front of you. This makes Wing of Astel vastly more consistent than Bastard Stars, as the most bullets you can hit with Bastard Stars is 8, just due to the angle of it. The melee hitbox will do 1116.972 damage, based on the average magic damage negation, assuming you aren't using buffs. On average, the Wing of Astel will hit for 3348.243 damage, and Bastard Stars will hit for 2271.835. It's like rolling a dice. The RNG lies in all attacks actually landing. So while it has numerically higher potential, it has less consistency, which, in the grand scheme, results in it being inferior, despite being numerically superior. It's higher damage is only better if you can get that damage on demand. This should be a no-brainer, as it has around 10 total hitboxes that, when used properly, can one-shot Margit with over 7,000 fucking damage. It I don't see how 21 hitboxes is around 10. When I think of around 10, it's normally like, you know, 12 or 13 at most, not 21. So I have no idea where he got the number 10 from. Anyways, when it comes to melee weapons for mages, 99% of players use either the Dark Moon Greatsword or Moon Veil, which used to be the best choices up until recently. Moon Veil and Dark Moon Greatsword were never the best choices. That was always the Wing of Astel, and it still remains the Wing of Astel. Because despite everything, Bastard Stars is way too unreliable to actually hit its combo fully and get the most damage out of it consistently. The intelligence scaling of the Bastard Stars is actually an A now, while more popular weapons like both the Moon Veil and Dark Moon Greatsword only get B tier scaling for intelligence at their max level. It's been a year. Why are we still comparing letter scaling like it actually matters? Letter scaling is a horrible representation of what the actual scaling numbers are. The best starting class for this build is the Astrologer class as we are maxing intelligence as high as possible while still needing to meet some other stat requirements. We get 50 vigor to stay healthy, 20 mind, 16 endurance, 10 strength, 22 dex, and 70 int. These are the only stats that we're adjusting and keeping faith and arcane at their base stats since we aren't using those. These stats along with the following gear and buffs will allow you to achieve the giga max damage you've seen me deal so far. This build synergizes extremely well with the Mushroom Crown and the Kindred of Raw Exaltation that offers around a 500 damage increase when active and combined with the spellblade set increases the magic damage dealt by your ashes of war by 2% for each piece of which we're using three pieces for the chest the hands and the legs the other buffs we use are very minimal the best spell buff is the terra magica this is a spell that when casted persists for 30 seconds increasing magic damage from any source by 35%. The only drawback is that you have to remain within the spell's radius when the damage is dealt to receive the buff, which means you need to be in the circle when casting the Bastard Star's Ash of War and remain in the circle when the stars explode. The explosion will not receive the increased damage buff, so keep that in mind. But the other buffs we use are the Crystal Tears within the Physics Flask, primarily the Magic Shrouding Crack Tier for an extra 20% magic damage, and Intelligence Not Tier to take us from 70 base intelligence to 80 to get as much damage from our new A tier intelligence scaling flail as possible. Besides the Kindred of Rot Talisman that I mentioned earlier, I also use the Shard of Alexander giving plus 15% increased damage to your Ashes of War. The Magic Scorpion Charm that increases magic damage by 12%, but increases damage you take by 10%, which I would never use in PvP, but that's irrelevant because this is a PvE build anyways. And lastly, the Stargazer's Heirloom for plus 5 int just to give us an extra boost of damage. We went full hyper mode for my improved build, outside of buff stacking, because apparently Cyrobe doesn't like that, and to be honest, I don't blame him. For the starting class, it's Astrologer. He was correct on this. Astrologer is the best class for an int build. For Vigor, we have 54 Vigor. That's nearing the Vigor soft cap, but isn't quite there yet, as our other stats are more important. We have 20 Mind for spamming the... Ash of War on the Wing of Astel, as well as two casts of Ronnie's Dark Moon, which should proc Frostbite, as well as have the 20% damage debuff. We have base strength, as they aren't necessary to this build. 
We have 17 dexterity, that is the minimum requirement for the Wing of Estel. Since the weapon art only scales off of intelligence, that's all we're going to be investing into. And on that note, we have 80 intelligence. That is the in final intelligence soft cap. For weapons, we have the Wing of Estelle, which is going to be a Nash of War stick. For the sorcery staff we're using is the Carrion Regal Scepter. It doesn't really matter which sorcery staff you use, I'm only using this one because it buffs the Ronnie's Dark Moon slightly, which you're not really using it for damage. Although, when I was recording for this build, Ronnie's Dark Moon was killing some of the bosses before I could even set up Terra Magica. It's good enough on its own. It's not the main focus of this build though. Then for the shield, we're using the Twinberg Kites shield. And that's going to give us 5% damage and 10% damage negation when we're below 20% health. And that's going to further buff our hyper mode setup. For the armor, we have the full spell blade set. We are disregarding poise and damage negation for this build because that is going to not really be necessary since we only have 20% of our max HP, we aren't going to be tanking much. That being said, for our talismans, we have Magic Scorpion Charm, Shard of Alexander, Red Feather Branch Sword, and Blue Feather Branch Sword. Red Feather Branch Sword and Blue Feather Branch Sword are going to act as a improved version of the Twinberg Kite Shield, giving us 50% more damage negation and 20% more damage under 20% HP. Then we have the Magic Scorpion Charm, that's going to give us 12% magic damage. And the Shard of Alexander, which is going to buff our Ashes of War, or Ash of War, rather, by 15%. For the Great Rune, as always, we have the Rudan's Great Rune, there's no reason to use any other Great Rune. For PvE, unless you are extremely low level, or extremely high level. For the Crystal Tears, we have Opline Hard Tier and Magic Shrouding Crack Tier. The Applying Hard Tier is going to further add to our damage negation, and the Magic Shrouding Tier is going to further add to our magic damage. In total, we for our damage negation, we have 60 to 70 damage negation, which is pretty high. And that's going to help us tank a few hits, or should we get hit, at low HP, we will not die instantly, depending on the boss. And for buffs, we have the Ronnie's Dark Moon, Terra Magica, 